welcome to the party, Caleb. You are officially our very first interview on the event. So super excited to have you, brother. And I'm sure a lot of our members here are excited as well. So uh, for those who live under a rock and you don't know who Caleb Maddox is, uh, as you can see behind him, that Y2A is his newest launch that he's really, really focused on that's helping young entrepreneurs understand the power of YouTube and how to really monetize it to build your own dreams. I mean, the kid is genius. Uh, he's a seven-figure earner before the age of 18. I got to meet this kid years ago at an event called Secret Knock, introduced my son to him, and a big light bulb moment when he heard him say, don't pay your kids to do chores, pay them to read success books. <sighs> totally blew my mind, man. Ever since then, I've been following everything this kid does. So excited to have you in here, brother. Welcome to the party. Welcome to the show and take it away, brother. Dude, I'm excited to be here. And I see all the comments as well. This is a, this is a super cool format. And it just shows me like, the opportunities there are in 2020. Because even when something as crazy as what's going on right now is happening, I know how many people have been hit by that and how many people are home right now in quarantine. And like, that's what they're doing. But to be able to hop on here and to be able to network with people and hear from awesome speakers like you, Manny, like Dan Fleischman, like, you know, Les Brown and, you know, to learn from everyone that's in the, uh, on the tables as well. I think it's just so cool to see the opportunities that we have. And I want to give a big shout out to you, Manny, for making this happen, brother, because we wouldn't all be on here if it wasn't for you. And that's one of the coolest things for me to see is like, you know, the amount of people you're impacting just on this one thing right now. And I see you continuing for the past few years just to plug away, always producing content, but not just content. A lot of people post videos online. They, they hear people talk about building a personal brand, but you produce value. And there's a big difference behind that. So I'm glad you came in my life and I appreciate you inviting me on here. It's an, it's an honor to see everyone in the chat and looking forward to just having a good conversation with you. And also one thing I'd love to see because this is something that's a little bit different than most you know, maybe even if we were doing an event in person, me and you would usually be talking on stage, sitting on the couch, and, uh, and usually people would just be having different thoughts, but they can't really, you know, articulate those while we're speaking. So it's really cool if you guys are able to be asking questions in the chat, letting us know your thoughts. I would love if you guys, like, let's just have this be a giant conversation. So if you guys uh, have any questions for me, you have any questions for Manny, or you just have any feedback or input, because I know you guys have a lot of value as well, make sure you're definitely chatting a lot during this, because I want to read those those as well. But yeah, dude, I'm looking forward to it. We're, we're going to provide some value for sure. Awesome. So first things first, I want to talk to the students. I mean, the whole purpose behind this educational piece, not only is going to get Caleb in front of my audience, but it's going to get my audience, my students in front of Caleb. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest things that I'm focused on is the From Orphan to CEO project. So let's start off with speaking directly to our day one entrepreneur at-risk youth, former foster kids, kids that are really just stuck around everyone that just tells them no. I mean, what are some of the things that young entrepreneurs need to fully understand before they take that first step in starting to build their own dream? A hundred percent. Well, I feel like the first thing I would say is number one place, like the fact that watching this shows that you're already. Uh oh, we lost connection. We'll bring him back. All right, I think he has to refresh it in. All right, guys. Well, while you were waiting for him to jump back in, uh, man, that was a. Uh, I was so sad. He was just getting into it. <laughs> gotta love the. Gotta love technology, right? Well, uh, I would try to go on to what he was saying, but I don't want to take away from any of his thunder. So I really wanted to jump back. All right, so Caleb is back in. So how do I get him to the back of my speaking? There he is. Oh, he's back. <laughs> All right, I'm it. it kicked me out. I was <laughs> devastated. I was missing you guys already. Um, oh, man. I was so sad. I was almost about to cry. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. So basically what I was saying, though, I was saying for any young person out there that's getting started, the fact you guys are already on here shows so much about you, right? Because you can be doing anything. I know that most people right now, especially with the time that we're in, they're sitting there watching Netflix. They're watching Disney show. They're on YouTube. They're doing all sorts of different stuff like that. But the fact that this is what you're consuming, you're watching this right now, you already have such a head start, uh, uh, you know, really above everyone else. And that was the ultimate thing my dad did for me when I was growing up. It's like Manny said, my dad didn't pay me to do chores, but he paid me for every single business book that I would read. And although my dad taught me so much, one of the greatest gifts my, ever, my dad ever gave me was an intense hunger to learn. Like that was the biggest thing he really instilled in me is this insane curiosity that's driven everything else. And for example, I was on an interview the other day uh, on this like TV show type of thing. And someone that was asked me, they're like, 
Caleb, what would you advise your younger kids? And they're like, I know you've probably never thought about this because you're only 18 years old and you're not going to have kids for a while now, right? Which is true. I'm not going to have kids for a very long time. Let's preface that, man. Don't worry about it. But I had my first at 19. So I really? started very that's yes. a year away. I, I, I'm going I'm to I'm prolong that just a little bit, but I respect. I hope so. Yeah, right, right. So for me, though, like I think about that a lot. I'm always constantly thinking, what would I advise my kids when I have them? I'm always having conversations with my future kids because that's how I want to treat every single kid that comes into my programs is doing exactly how my dad did it for me and exactly how I'm going to do it for my kids as well. Like That's how I'm going to be instilling them. And they asked me, what would be the number one thing you'd instill in your kids? And what I answered was curiosity. That would be the number thing. They're like, if you had 30 seconds, tell your kids one thing, you could instill one quality in them in that 30 seconds, they'd be guaranteed to have, but then you die after that and they no longer have you in their life. I said, curiosity, because there's only so much I could say in 30 seconds or even in this 40 minute speech right here, or however long this is going to be, there's only so much that I can say during this time. But if you have curiosity, that's going to drive me to find all that I can't relay right now. And I think for me, there was no one thing I heard or one book I read or one podcast I listened to or one event I went to. It's really about immersion. And the only way you're going to immerse yourself is if you have a strong curiosity to learn, if you have a deep hunger to learn. And what I always say is the person hungry is to learn will always be fed the most results. And like, that's the way I think about it is it's hungry. Right? Like that's even one of the things Les Brown talks about. It's like this way someone who has not had food in days is going to be craving food. They're going to be irritated. They don't have food. You need to start feeling that way when you don't have knowledge, when you don't, when you're not learning, when you're not learning new things. And so many times that people only try to learn because they want an outcome. And like, that's their treasures. Like I want to learn this thing so I can get this treasure. But when the learning becomes the treasure, that's when really powerful things happen. So the first thing I say, I can go through a list of things. I can literally just rant you. If you said, rant for an hour and a half. I'd go for it. I could rant for an hour and a half and just give it. Great. Got I, backup pants. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I, I could literally do that for an hour and a half. But the main thing I would say to someone starting out is have an intense curiosity because I've met a lot of young people, the ones that win, and I'm not talking about the ones that had a short term win, just a quick hit. And then, you know, they're going backwards. The, the people, the big things who are going to continue. Oh no, we lost them again. That connection's not good, man. That connection's not good. We need the Wi-Fi. All right, you get back in when you can, Caleb. We'll get back in. I saw a little cutting out a little bit, and then it uh, we lost them. See, this is what happens, man. You know, the universe is trying to block the greatness that is creating right now. But don't worry. Our God is a lot stronger. So at the end of the day, uh, we know we're going to get him back on in the next 30 to 60 seconds. So I'm not worried. Look at that. Look at that. This is how quick my God works. I'm, I'm telling you, I ain't worried. Too blessed to be stressed. That's all I'm going to say. I, I got a process to get back on now. So if we, if it happens again, I'm back on in a second. No worries. Um, Wait. Yeah, anyway, so, but, but like, that's the thing is like, I find the young people that end up winning the most, they were just the hungriest to learn. It's not, they have some crazy talent. It's not, you know, they have someone like special in their life. And the only reason if someone special in their life caused them to win is because they learn from that person. So like, that's how I say, like the, the foundational thing that drives everyone. If you look at any great athlete, they have an intense hunger to learn. If you look at any great business person, they have an intense hunger to learn. Someone like Warren Buffett, he's reading six hours a day. You know what I mean? Kobe Bryant was learning hours and hours a day. He would go to high school basketball games when he was in the NBA just to see if there was anything a high school basketball player knew that he didn't know. And it's that mm -hmm. foundation that leads great people to becoming great, I really feel. It's being a sponge for knowledge, you know, and I like the way you put that, make learning become the treasure. And I think that's where a lot of these young kids don't understand is that the learning can be fun if you do it in a way that you like to consume it. And the problem with our educational system, and you could probably attest to this, is there's only one way to learn, right? They only have one way to put everybody in and then the ones that get it, they love it and they just consume it and they're just on it all day. But then the ones that are creative, those artists, those ones that just think outside the box, they don't get it. They're like me. I, I do very well in life and business and motivation. I can understand how the world works. But in school, I mean, I'm the one getting kicked out at Sid, kicked out, uh, how to, they call it the Manny Island where they put my desk outside because I was so <laughs> misbehaving and just chaos. Uh, I even barely graduated high school. I mean, I had to get a great bump just so I could graduate. But yet, just two years before, I had straight A's, scholarships up the wazoo. So it's just really odd the way our educational system works. And I want to touch on that because some of the way that you've been teaching as well 
has been a different way that teaches kids how to learn. Can you touch on a little bit of what does it take today to get our education to learn about entrepreneurship and mentorship? Yeah, and by the way, I, I want to bring that up real fast about the current education system because that's my life mission. By the way, Dan, I just silenced it, so no more tech notifications coming <laughs> in. But, uh, but, but like, that's my overall mission. I do a lot of things. I have a lot of things going on, a lot of projects I'm working on that are all that I'm all super passionate about. But there's one thing that fuels me. There's one thing that gets me up in the morning, and that's my obsession. It's not the thing that I work hard on. It's the thing I can't not work hard on. It's the thing, even when I'm not working, I'm thinking about. And that's changing the current education system because I feel like that's one of the ultimate dominoes to fix so many problems that we currently have going on. And this year, I'm actually going to be releasing, and I've actually never shared this anywhere. I'm going to share with Manny's on because you guys are you guys are the homies. But I'm actually World gonna, premiere. Yeah, right. I'm actually going to be releasing a homeschool program called Alternative, which is the alternative to the current way the education is done. And the real mission behind Alternative is I feel like the future of education isn't based off of answers. It's based off of questions. And I feel like so much we give kids a set of questions, 20 questions you have to know the answer to. But like, I don't know about you. I've never learned after school with I'm learning every single day. I personally never learned through answers through like, like through having uh, to memorize an answer to a question. How I've learned is by having a burning question that I have to have the answer to. So I'll go and go down a rabbit hole on YouTube and Google for six hours straight, trying to find as many answers to that one question. But all my education, all my learning, that's really been the reason behind everything I've done now has be, been because of the questions that I've had. And one of the advantages I had, believe it or not, man, and I've really been reflecting on this a lot, the older that I get, is that when I was younger, because I started, I wrote my book and I started doing so many videos, a lot of people started interviewing me. And some of the times that I learned the most is during those interviews where people were actually asking me questions because I was coming up with the answers myself. My mind had to illuminate. So one of the things we're going to be doing alter alternative, and there's so much that goes into alternative, but one of the things we're going to be doing alternative is it's not just going to be memorize this answer, but it's going to be what questions do you have? And we're going to give them ways to find the answers to those questions. And I feel like an like a, a amazing day of education, get taught certain an amazing day of education is what oh, amazing day of education is dot, dot, dot. Soon we'll know. We shall know. Let's leave it right at that. <laughs> I like how he leaves us on these little cliffhangers. I think he was doing this on purpose. This may be a little part of his plan. I don't know. Stay tuned. We'll find out. <laughs> so I really like this. So, so far, uh, I'll just keep recapping every time he cuts off. So I think it's a great way for us to kind of understand what he's sharing. Uh, curiosity is the biggest thing that's going to get these kids to want to understand it. And I think that's really true. I mean, understanding that if you're not curious about something, what makes you think you're going to want to learn it? What makes you think you're going to want to dive deep in it? Go down that rabbit hole for six hours on YouTube on one topic. Not curiosity, that's for sure. You got to make sure you have that. So immersion, um, you got to immerse yourself into this. I mean, that's, that's big. I mean, look at the way he did that. He's come up with all kinds of different ways to answer that question that he brought it in and make sure that I don't have him locked out of participating. Now he's good. So whenever he pops back in, he's good. Um, it's the internet. It's the internet. Slow down. There's a lot of people on, I guess. So then you've got how basically turning food into knowledge. I mean, think about it. If you were starving and you didn't have food, what's the thing that you just be on your mind all the time it would be food, right? You got to got to just utilize your knowledge and wisdom that you're gaining as food. So we get should get Caleb popping in any second. Uh, let's say, oh, I really love it. Make learning become the treasure. I really like that. And that's going to go down to how they learn. Most people these days are trying to teach uh, on an old based concept, right? And this is why these students aren't gravitating into this new generation. They want instant gratification. They want video. They want on demand. If it ain't one of those three, if it ain't all those three, you ain't going to reach them. So that's going to be hard. So far waiting for Caleb, but meanwhile, his words are powerful. Yes, I'm right here with you. Changing the educational system. My goal is to mandate actual financial education, helping kids learn about what they actually need for the future. Yes. Uh, very much so. Okay, so Caleb is still having some difficulty hopping in. Uh, do not worry. Technology will be back on our side very, very shortly. Maybe I'll do this. I think I'm going to have Caleb run the, once he comes back in, I'm just going to have him come in 
uh, individually. There we go. All right, you are back, brother. I don't know what's happened. I even upgraded my Wi-Fi last week and everything, so we should be good. There must be a lot of people using my Wi-Fi in quarantine. I don't know what's going on. Let's do this because it's running both of us side by side. So it may be me slowing you down, taking up this HD quality picture of my beautiful face here. <laughs> so let's do this. I'm going to have you run for about 10, 15 minutes or so of just giving us some good solo insights on what we need to do about educational systems, what entrepreneurs need to know, uh, some maybe some marketing tactics that you're currently using to gravitate some eyeballs towards what you're doing. And then I'll come back in for some more Q&A. How about that? That's not the plan. If you have any questions, man, you can just put them in the chat too, and I'll just treat that as if you said it. I'm gonna miss your voice. But we we can roll this way. We roll it the okay, point. Okay, how do I do this right? So I don't want to turn anything off. So give me a second here. You're good. Okay, that's part good. Hey guys, I do want to do this. sound is coming in a little bit better now try talking can you hear me now yes all right we're clear now you all right let's do it this way because then i think maybe it's helping with my audio but i'll keep my video off all right, all right. We're, we're back in business um yes so so basically and guys by the way if you have questions while i'm talking about this stuff i want you guys to drop them below because that way we can have a, a good combo but so what i was saying about the education system though is for, for me one of them with things is that it's centered around questions and not answers. And whenever I've worked with kids in the past, what I found is the kids that get the most results, it's not the ones that I give the best answers to. It's the ones that have the, the, the biggest amount, or who have the most questions that they're burning with curiosity about. That's the ones that, that actually win. And the other thing about, about alternative and kind of where we're going with the education system is I feel like, you know, I, I surveyed a bunch of the people in my inner circle. I surveyed the wealthiest people I know. I surveyed the most famous people I know. I surveyed the people closest to me. Is there no sound now? Can you hear me? Because it said, oh, I'm good. Okay. So I sir, all right, good, good. I saw someone said no sound or that there's an echo. All right, sweet, sweet. You guys can hear me. I can hear you perfect. All right. So um, so I surveyed, I literally texted and called the people in my family. I called friends from my old school. I talked to teachers. I talked to as many people as possible from all different aspects of life. And I just wanted to know. What do you feel is the number one problem with the current education system? And the answer I got back actually shocked me the most because I expected it to be, I expected it to be either they don't teach financial literacy or it's not entertaining enough. But the most common thing that people said, no gamification is a great one, Manny, but the most common thing that people said was that it's one size fits all. That was the number one thing people said. And I feel like it's because in school, so many people feel that way. They go through school. And they're going through this curriculum that it's like, how is this person who thinks completely different than me? Is it, is it audio and video back? I see people are saying I'm good. All right. Um, so like it, the people who are, you know, the smartest in the class and the people who are maybe not understanding the concepts the most are going through the exact same things. The people who learn visually and the people who learn, you know, audibly, they're going through the exact same things. So everything, all these people who are so different, because humans by nature, we, we all have different strong points, different weak points. So we're all so different. We learn different ways. Like, for example, me, I'm personally a very visual learner. So even though I love like reading and stuff, I love watching videos that explain stuff. Like that's just the way I am. I'm very visual, but it's so one size fits all. So another one of the big things about alternatives, is we're actually integrating an AI, uh, which is an artificial intelligence that's going to learn the kids. So one of the aspects behind alternative is your kids don't just learn, but we learn your kids. And what's cool is actually as your kids come in in the first few weeks, the AI is learning about them and learning about the way they learn and learning that this kid is actually grasping concepts the best through reading, while this one's grasping it best through video, while this one's grasping it the best through audio, and this one's grasping it the best through a little bit of both. And so like we literally are learning the kids as we go. So it's going to be really, really exciting as that starts to come out. And like that for me is what I'm so, so excited about. And a lot of things I'm doing now are just leading up to that. It's the, the little chess moves in order to get to that place. But that is where we're going with, uh, with alternative. And that's what excites me because even though I love doing videos and I love talking, I think that I know there's only so much that I can articulate in your lives. 
impact people through doing videos. Like I had videos that reached 40 million people and I love getting the messages of people seeing how much it changed their life. And that's why I'm actually ramping up social media again. I mean, in fact, I videoed or I filmed three videos yesterday for my social media and I haven't filmed for literally months for my social media. So I'm about to be back online and producing content each and every single day. So I do want to do that still, but I know there's only so much I can scale just me. And now my goal is to create assets and to create um, systems and processes that can, that millions of kids can go through that make their lives better. And that's really what we're doing with Alternative, as well as another app we have releasing uh, this, this, uh, this year as well, which is really, really exciting, which we have our CTO working on. So we have a lot of really, really cool things as far as the education system goes uh, that I am super excited about uh, about popping off. It's going to be fun. We love you, Caleb. I appreciate that, Annie. Manny says, nice, Cam. It's going to be fun. Don't say, Caleb, you were a young Les Brown. I appreciate that. Chris. Also, Chris, I remember meeting you at Thrive. What's up, bro? Good to see you. Um, so I currently have that going on. And then another thing that I'm also working on right now that I'm really, really passionate about is something called YT, which Man uh, Manny mentioned in the very, very beginning. And this is something I'm doing in the interim that I'm kind of doing as a solution for the current problems that's going on. Because I know there's so many people right now, they're in quarantine. They, uh, a lot of people are unemployed, they're losing their jobs, and they're trying to figure out how they can make money from home at this current time, which is why so many of you guys are on this right now. And I know you guys are learning so many awesome things from Manny and everyone else who's going to be on here as well. But one of the things we're doing with YTA is we're showing people how to profit from YouTube without ever showing your face on camera, without ever editing a single video, without being like a YouTuber with a crazy personality. Like you don't even have to be the one to show your face ever. And you don't even have to spend a single dime on YouTube advertising. So that's been a big thing that we've been, uh, that we've been focused on over the past month is putting this out there. Uh, in the last 30 days, we've had a little over a thousand people that have already invested and gone through our program, which is really, really exciting. And kind of how it works is we went to our friend who has an automated YouTube channel. So basically he has 12 channels that upload videos every single day that he doesn't touch. So he'll literally go on vacation for a month and a half straight or however long it might be. And these videos are still being uploaded. And what's cool is every single video that's uploaded, he gets paid for because he has the monetize. So YouTube will pay him money for every single view that he gets on these YouTube videos. And, uh, and it's crazy because he has literally 12 assets being produced every single day that he literally will be on vacation and they're still being uploaded and produced. So we cut him a hundred thousand dollar check. Me and my business partner, Ryan did to create something called the YT masterclass with us, which is where we show people how to profit from YouTube fully automated, where you don't even have to be the one on camera. So that's another thing that we're working on right now. Uh, that's really exciting as well. And one of the things I want to do for you guys, cause maybe would ask me like, What's something I could give you guys kind of as a bonus? I actually filmed a three hour long training showing or kind of what the YTA method is and what that opportunity is. And it's so cool. We've had like tens of thousands of people go through the training and then a thousand plus people go through the YTA masterclass. And during this time, there's so many people already getting results with it. So many people have their, their channels fully automated. They have teams in place. And literally two weeks ago, they lost their job and became unemployed. And now they employ five people under their YTA channel and they have full teams that have this stuff going. So it's been really, really cool. So we filmed, or I filmed a three hour long training that I'm going to give you guys for free, which is also available online, but I want to give that to you guys as a bonus. Um, and at the very end, I also present you guys the opportunity to become a part of the YTA masterclass. Manny's going to put it right there. If you like this free gift, you can just text Caleb 2020. And then another thing, my team took that three hour long training that I did and they turned it into a book which I had no clue. They literally, I went to my door. I thought uh, it was my DoorDash because I was ordering food because I'm in quarantine. And it turns out I had a book about the training I did, which is called the YTA method. And I'm also going to give all of you guys a free ebook copy of this as well, which is the three hour long training transcribed as well as some stuff I didn't even talk about inside the three hour long training. So you guys are going to be getting that as well. I just wanted to get that out of the way up front, which is really, really exciting. And guess what? No one else on the face of the internet has a copy of the YTA method. So you guys are the very first people to be getting a copy of the YTA method and to be learning about that opportunity. I have not released it to my social media. I've not released it to even the people who have bought the YTA masterclass. You guys are the first people that's going to be getting a stab at this. And I can't wait to hear the results you guys get. But here's what I would love for you guys to do. I'm here for you guys, right? Like that's why I'm here. Like if this was just for me, I'd be working right now. Or if I just wanted to talk to myself, I'd be meditating and having a mental conversation. I'm here because I want to provide value to you guys. And honestly, there's so much that I can say, so much that goes through my mind on a day in and day out basis, but there's very, there's very specific things that I know if you guys heard, it would help you with where your business. 
By the way, I'm loving the chat. You guys are so positive. It's one of the best crowds ever. I love it. Um, but I would love to hear you guys ask the questions you specifically want the answers for. And, and I'm just going to answer those over the next little bit and make sure I can specifically answer what you guys are looking for. DD said, my son is nine. Can he start doing your program? I would definitely watch the YT method training, the three hour long training with your nine year old son or read the book with him. I would do one of those two things. And uh, cause we have a lot of families. In fact, I just talked to a father and son who watched the entire training and then they joined the YT masterclass after the training. And they're a part of that as well. They're both starting a YouTube channel. And one of them, one of the things that actually had my dad and I bond when I was younger is the fact that we would film videos together. And that was one of the number one bonding points that we kind of had as I grew up. And in fact, that was the number one reason I got confidence at a young age. And something I'm going to talk a lot about. But when I was younger, I had, like, I had no confidence whatsoever. You guys probably heard me tell that before. I was very shy, very insecure. If someone tried to talk to me, I'd start crying and hide behind my dad's leg immediately. I had no confidence whatsoever. And the way that my dad broke that is we'd go for walks on the beach. And my dad would pull out the camera. And he'd film me and he'd ask me questions and he would say, you need a little bit more enthusiasm. So like I would answer a question, he'd be like, have more enthusiasm, look the camera in the eye. And because I wouldn't talk to people, my dad had me talk to the camera and just communicate to the camera as if it was a person. And then as we started doing this, like a month in, my dad would start saying, Hey, you know, say what's up to your uncle, Travis, say what's up to your papa, dude, your grandpa, uh, your grandpa, papa, dude. So I would say what's up to them. So then I, I started realizing that the camera was real people. And even at the age of eight years old, when I had no confidence at all, my dad putting me on camera was the thing that gave me confidence. And that's one of the things that we're going to be integrating a lot into the apps that we have coming out and the homeschool programs and all that stuff is we are going to be um, giving kids the opportunity to like be on camera so they can express themselves and have more confidence. So I definitely recommend you guys, to, you know, show your kids this and then potentially start having them do YouTube videos because it's one of the number one confidence builders uh, at a young age. Justin said, hey, Caleb, I got introduced to you as the MC speaker. Uh, at Tab 2.0 Jamaica, you rock the stage. Glad to see you continue skyrocketing progress. What is keeping you hungry to learn personally? We want to learn from your drive. Justin, good to see you again, brother. I definitely remember hanging out with you, and it's good to see you again. Um, what keeps me hungry to learn is that I haven't done anything yet. That's what keeps me hungry to learn. You know, a lot of people, they look what I've done at 18, they're like, wow, that's impressive. And obviously, I have done some impressive things. But my mission has always been to change the education system, and it's always been to er impact every single person on earth. And I think that's why it was so easy for me to have videos with millions of views because, like, that was my lowest standard was reaching millions of people was just a stepping stone because I, I really want to reach billions of people. So what keeps me hungry to learn is honestly, number one, my lack of being where I want to be. I haven't changed the education system yet, and everything else is failure. And number two is my insane amount of current ignorance. I realize I'm still extremely ignorant. I'm 18 years old. And yes, I know a decent amount about a certain amount of things. There's still so much that I don't know. And I feel like every single time I'm learning, I'm uncovering cheat codes to life. Like that's really how I think about it at the end of the day. Like when I'm learning things, that's just me getting a new cheat code. The next time I run into a situation that gets me closer to changing the education system. Now I have a cheat code to help me get there faster. And people, like I said, that's why I view learning as the treasure because I know that the more I learn, literally the more I earn, like the more I learn, the further that I go. And for me, I've clearly not learned enough. And I've been around too many extremely smart people who know a lot more than me to think that I know what I need to know by now. So for me, what keeps me hungry to learn is understanding that there's infinite amount of knowledge out there. And if you know 90% of an infinite number, you know nothing. And that's how I feel currently. If I knew 90% of everything, I know nothing because there's an infinite amount of knowledge. And I've realized that the, the, the smartest people I've ever met, the most successful people, the people who have the most wisdom. And whenever I say smart, that's really what I'm meaning. Not intelligence, but wisdom. They're the people who still ask the most questions, who are still the hungriest to learn because they got that wisdom by being hungry to learn. And they keep that wisdom by being hungry to learn. That's something I've learned in my life. Wisdom can leave. If you, if you stop your journey of learning. So that's what keeps me so hungry. Caleb, it's amazing to see you. Uh, it's amazing to connect and get to watch you live again. Thank you, Stephanie. Tips for parents with kids at home during quarantine. Great question, Chris. Tips for parents uh, with kids at home during quarantine. My, my tips to you guys would be, this is a great time for two things. Number one, bonding. And number two, learning. It's a great time for both those things. And you have your kids at home away from school. So now it's time to give them one of their ultimate. And 
let me just say, let me just put it this way. Like, let me just share what my dad and I would do if we were in quarantine. Cause my dad's all the way in Florida and I'm all the way in Arizona now that I'm 18 and grown up and I have my own place and everything now. But if I was younger and we were in quarantine, there's only two things we'd be doing. Number one, we'd be bonding and making memories that we're going to talk about forever, even when we're out of quarantine. And you have this time to be at home with your kids and to strengthen the bond. And that was something my dad focused on each and every single day was how can I strengthen the bond that we have? Like, that's why he wrote a letter in my lunchbox every single day of school was because he wanted to continue to strengthen the bond. And that was what he was always doing. So number one, I'd make memories. I'd have fun. I wouldn't let this be a time where you guys feel cooped up and stressed out. Like this is the, the last time you should ever be stressed out. This is a time to show your kids that even during a tough time that you're able to have enthusiasm and positivity. So the number one thing I do is I'd have an insane bond. And I, I'd look up like activities you do during quarantine. I would just do fun stuff and make it fun and just strengthen the bond that you guys have. That's the first thing. And I'd have a lot of fun and make memories. I know my dad and I would be doing all sorts of things in the house. One of the things you could do, if you have like, let's say a bunch of ping pong balls, right? And you have like a box, right on the ping pong balls with a pin, a bunch of quarantine activities, one on each of them. You have like 30 of them maybe. Put them inside the box. And every morning when you guys wake up, open up the box. And this is what my dad and I used to do every single Friday outside of quarantine, right? Obviously, because we were in quarantine. But we had a family fun box. And on the ping pong balls would be written activities. And like say one of them was, Go to the batting cage. One of them would be go to go ride a roller coaster. One of them would be go do bowling, go ride go karts. One would be Caleb's free night where I could choose anything. And we'd pick one thing out of the box. And whatever that thing was, we would do on that Friday, on that family Friday. That's the thing we would do. And it was always so exciting for me as a kid. I'd wake up and be like, what are we going to do today? It was like this, like, you know, uh, I, I had no clue. It was this surprise every single day or sorry, every single Friday. So I do the same thing right out on a bunch of ping pong balls. Some activities, look up quarantine activities, write out the most fun quarantine activities. And every morning when you wake up, pick it out of the box. That's a way to make it fun during quarantine. A lot of people, they wouldn't think of doing something like that. But that's something my dad did for me as a kid. And I always loved and had so much fun doing. So that's one thing, strengthen the bond. And number two, this is when I would do the most amount of learning. Half of the day be having fun and the other half of the day say, all right, guys, it's time to, it's, it's time to start learning. It's time to start having some education. Sit around with your family. Read a book together. Learn together. That's what my dad and I used to do. We'd each read a book and we'd be like, what did you learn from this, Caleb? And I'd be like, well, this is what I learned. I would tell him what I learned. What about you, dad? He would tell me what he learned. You know, just enforce, like if we read one book, it was like we read it four times because we were just enforcing that same book into each other. We would watch videos, like watch videos from successful people, you know, go through the YTA video training, like be learning this during this time. This is a great time to strengthen your mind. And while well, this is a time of boredom. One of the things I've realized is boredom has led me to my greatest discoveries. And so much times people want to always be entertained, but entertainment clearly isn't the key to happiness, fulfillment, nor success because everyone on earth currently, everyone, especially in America, currently has insane amounts of opportunities to be entertained. There's so much entertainment platforms and entertainment and games you can play and all sorts of things that we can do. It's like our, our society is centered around entertainment, but clearly most people aren't fulfilled. They're not happy and they're not successful. So if you're finding that like, that's like, that's just not going to work. If you want fulfillment, you want success, you want happiness, it's not going to be entertainment. So during a time like this, don't, I, I would encourage you the time you would be spending on entertainment, spend that being educated and learning and expanding your guys' mind. And, and, and when you're, when you're bored, that means you're not entertained. And during that time, that's the best time where your mind, your human mind will wander off. And I feel like that's one of the reasons humans used to be more curious is because we had less things to entertain us. So when you sit there all day, your your mind has to start to entertain it, entertain itself. And that's what I do all day. I'm sitting inside and I'm just thinking. And my own mind entertains myself. My dad literally called me yesterday. He's like, Caleb, he's like, most people don't realize they can play movies in their head. And I thought that was so funny because that's literally what I do all day. Like, I'll just sit down and me and my friends will be like, all right, guys, let's go somewhere in our head. And we'll close our eyes and we'll travel somewhere in our head and literally just go somewhere. And that's when some of my greatest breakthroughs have happened. It's just me traveling somewhere in my head, going somewhere in my head. And that's when I have breakthroughs. Like, right before I'm going to bed, that's usually when I have my number one epiphanies and I take notes and I'm writing stuff down. It's because I'm bored and I have nothing to do and I'm just, like, falling asleep. And my mind is, is forced to wander. So during this time, one of the, another amazing thing to do is, is wander with wonder. You know what I mean? Let your mind wander during this time of boredom with wonder of being like curious. Like the key to a wonderful life is having wonder. When you look at life through a lens of just like, how crazy is this thing? Like you just like let your mind wander. Like that's what, that's what I mean by curiosity. It's not just, I want to know the answer to this. It's like, you just have this insane wonder for life and you're like, there's so much that I don't know. And I think that's another, one of the massive downfalls 
of uh, of our education. Oh, we lost him again. Let me turn my video back on so you can see me at least. <laughs> All right, so he will be popping back in. Uh, one thing I want you guys to do, if you have questions, click over to the Q&A tab and ask your question right there so it gets organized into the Q&A section. Oh, you're back. Welcome back, brother. I'm back. Uh, I was just letting them know that there is a Q&A section right here on the chat box that they can ask their questions in. Uh, so people can go there and just plug in a question um, and uh, be able to have them all organized because I see a lot of comments coming in. I see questions coming in and some of these questions are getting buried in some of these comments. So um, uh, I don't know how that happened. Daryl, could you uh, disconnect your video there, please, buddy? Go to refresh, Daryl. Daryl wanted to hang out at the table, man. I respect it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they're doing that. I have to give them permission, but somehow people can jump in. I don't know what they're doing. There's some little hidden hidden feature in there. Uh, so there is two questions that uh, have popped in so far. I have a 15 year old. How can he? Uh, I have 15 year old. He. Wait, wait. I have a 15 old. Can he do the program with me uh, for him to create his own business? I would say yes. Uh, Caleb, do you want to take that question? Absolutely. In fact, I'd encourage that he does do it with you. Like it's better when you do it with someone. That's one of the things we talk about inside the program. And we have so many families going through this thing together. And especially because like you each probably have unique skill sets. Like you're going to be picking up things and then he's going to be picking up things that you wouldn't pick up. And you're going to be picking up things he wouldn't pick up. So 100% you guys can do it together. It's a fun family activity. And I would say, honestly, doing the YTA is probably the best family business that you guys can start because the number one dream of young kids nowadays, believe it or not, statistically, they, they've done tons of studies and I've researched this a lot because I'm curious. Like, what, if he, what do kids want to be when they grow up? That's like the classic question, right? Is they want to be YouTubers. In fact, there's more people now, more kids now that want to be YouTubers than astronauts. And this has gone across the board. There's so many different studies about this. And, uh, and this is a great way. Kids are already watching YouTube. This is a great way for them to be able to be working on something that's productive, that progresses them where they're going to be learning a lot. And the other thing about the YTA masterclass and what we do with YTA is it's not just where we give you guys a vehicle, which is how to make money on YouTube. But with that vehicle, we give you the mentality. It's not just the giving you the plane because it's a great thing to have a hundred million dollar private jet. But what, what, what good is that private jet if you don't have a pilot, right? And, and so it's key that you don't just have a vehicle, but you have the mentality and mindset and skill set you need in order to be able to operate that vehicle. So inside the masterclass, we focus as much, not just on the vehicle, but also on the mentality it takes to be able to operate that vehicle. So during ITA, although you're going to be learning a lot about how to use YouTube, your son's going to be learning a lot about how to use YouTube. Also, your son's going to be learning a lot about the mentality it takes to win in life. And even if he never did YouTube, just going through this as a gateway drug into learning the right mindset, having the right foundation, will be extremely impactful and extremely life-changing. So, uh, And there's one thing inside of the YTA Master Class that I love more than anything. It's called the Maximum Wage Mentality. And me and my business partner, Ryan, actually filmed this. Ryan uh, is my best friend. He's been my best friend for five years. And he's been my business partner on every one of my companies for the last year and a half. We go 50-50 on everything. That's how close he is to me and how much I trust him and how much I believe in him. And he's, uh, you know... He's one of the, he's like one of the best marketers I've ever met in my entire life. He's, he's unbelievable. He's done $50 million plus online. He was actually behind the number one launch in internet marketing history. He was behind the whole launch that Tony Robbins, Dean Graziosi and Russell Brunson did. He came up with that idea. His name is Ryan O'Donnell. And me and him sat down for an entire three day time span on top of filming the YTA masterclass. And for hours and hours, we filmed hours and hours worth of content, just talking about the mentality that we have at a young age that's caused us to win in the certain things that we've won with. And um, that part alone is worth the entire YTA masterclass. And that's just the last bonus section that's in there as well as there's like 30 other bonuses that come with it. So if that was all they got, it would be worth it. Not to mention doing actual YTA, 100% it would be worth it for sure. But I wanna go back to the, uh, to the uh, to what I was talking about with the education system real fast, because I can talk about this all day and I'm gonna answer more questions because I know there's so many questions that you guys have. But the reason why I'm saying wandering with wonder I feel like one of the things that we do wrong as an education system and as a school system, you guys can tell I get a little bit passionate about this stuff, is the fact that we say that we're right. And I think that's one thing that we, that we do wrong as humans is when we teach kids things, we don't know the answer to 90% of stuff we teach, for example, in science, right? Like hundreds of years ago, they were saying it revolves around it. 
it differently. So how much? No, oh, we lost him again. This technology, man, this technology. Keep trying to, every time he tries to talk about the education system, the system kicks him out. I don't know. The system seems a little, uh, a little um, prejudiced, if you know what I'm saying, you know? <laughs> so I see you guys are definitely using the Q&A. Uh, this is perfect. This is exactly the way we wanted to work it. And we're back. All right. I'm just keeping them busy while, while you just keep floating in and out. Well, people don't know. We've been planning where it cuts out every once in a while. We give them a quick break. Manny can come I, in. You know, maybe, those cliffhangers. Yeah. We got to right. leave them on cliffhangers, man. Give them some extra dopamine. But, um, but like, for example, our, our current education system, we tell kids that like this is the truth. And one of the things I would love to tell kids is this is what we currently know. See if you can find a different answer. And I think that's one of the important things, too, is, is so many times, like, this is the answer. But I've learned so much things in school that's already been disproven, as well as things in school that if it was like, this is, like, something you can learn that, that humans currently think is the right answer, but see if you can find something else. I feel like young minds would be able to find so many answers to questions that we've been asking for so long. So that's another extra thing I just want to add in there. Um, that's my life's mission, guys. Like I would, I was literally telling my friends the other day, me and a group of friends, because we're all in quarantine together, and I was like, guys, if you told me the only way to change the education system, and there was no way it could happen unless this one thing happened, and that was that I have to die right now, I would literally be willing to die. And like that's how that, that's how passionate I am about this. Like I'm literally, I'm literally willing to die for the fact the education system will be changed. That's like my ultimate mission and my ultimate goal. Okay, so let's dive into some more. Let's dive into some more questions. Manny, is there any ones that you're seeing that you're personally liking? If not, I'm just gonna go through and, and find a bunch of them and uh, and go through. Well, what's really cool when you click on when you click on Q and A, I, I just realized people. Are there, there. And so people can vote on the different questions that are coming in. So it looks like the top vote right now is what's the best questions to ask kids. I think that's a really good question. There. That's a great, great question. What are, what, are, what are the things that we should be asking our kids? I actually want to do this. I want to make a video and just sit there and ask my kids like a hundred questions and see what they say, right? But what kind of questions do you think I should ask them? That's a, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, there's no specific question. There really isn't. I mean, I, I, I could give you like some, but like at the end of the day, my dad just was constantly asking me all sorts of different questions. that was just expanding my mind. And like, that's really, that's really what like a brain is, even though it's not actually a muscle, like as a physical, it's an organ, but like, that's what it is. It's a muscle. And like, as it, as it grows, it, it really does grow. Like you expand it, and then it expands and you expand and it expands. Like that's, that's how it works. And my dad was always asking me questions as a kid. When I get home from school, my dad would put up his phone, put it completely on airplane mode, wouldn't accept any calls until that night. And the rest of the day, all he would do is ask me questions. How was school today? What'd you learn in school? What was your favorite thing? Uh, you know, your favorite moment from today? Uh, what friend did you have a good conversation with? Who did you help? What did you learn? What, what happened during PE? Did you win the game or not? What, what, did you have the better team? Did you make any excuses? He would ask me questions all the time. So I think there's there's a few things I would say on this. Number one, there's no specific question. But what I would say is just act the same way you want your kids to have curiosity, have curiosity with them. Like my dad was always wanting to know what's going on inside that little mind. He was always trying to dive in there, like know what's going on. So I would say the same thing for, for all the parents out there. So there's no specific question, but just be curious with what's going on inside your kid's head. The second thing is your kids naturally are going to already ask questions like, Humans by nature, the reason we learn is because we're asking questions. You're not like the ultimate thing. People say it like four years old. And why, 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 why? Like that's what I was as a kid. Like, I would always, why this, why that? I, I was just so curious. And that's what we now saw because little kids are trying to figure out answers to things. So I would say it's not even just the question you ask them, but it's when they ask questions, it's embracing that. It's say, you know what? I don't know the answer to that. Let's find that out together. And it's going online and it's learning about that thing. Even if it has nothing to do with their success or happiness, it's just a crazy random question about, you know, why liquids do this. Like it could be a random question, but like embrace their curiosities and go down that rabbit hole with them. And three practical things. This isn't necessarily curiosity driven or learning driven, but just three questions my dad would ask me every single night before I go to bed. And she'd ask me three things. Number one, what should I keep doing? Number two, what should I start doing? And number three, what should I stop doing? And every night he would ask me this, and then I would in return ask him this. So every night I would go to, he'd go to bed and say, what should I keep doing? I'd say, dad, you should keep, you should keep uh, putting your phone in airplane mode. I love you put it on airplane mode and we get to hang out and have quality time. I love that. What should I start doing? Well, maybe you can start doing this. And I would tell my dad something he could start doing. And my dad wouldn't be defensive. He wouldn't say anything bad about it. He would just be like, okay. And then what should you stop doing? And then my, I would tell him, well, one thing that you did today that kind of hurt me is, you know, like four. 
And those three questions were a way that we were always having open communication, transparent communication. Those are three really great questions to ask your kids. But I think if I give you questions, then they're not questions, they're statements. Does that make any sense? Because a question by nature is driven from curiosity. And if it's just a question you're asking because I told you so, it's just a statement you're making to your kids. Like one of the things my dad did for me is there wasn't a book that told him the questions to ask me. It was that he had questions that he wanted to know. And he was trying to constantly know what was going on inside my head. So having curiosity for your kids is a great way to pull out the curiosity in them. Kim says, Todd, go ahead. I really like, let's bring it back real quick, where the first thing your dad did before he started even asking questions is that he exclusivized the time for you to where he turned off his phone. And I think just the act of being able to stay present in your kid's life, that alone is going to make a whole different trajectory for their lives. I mean, just look at it. Your kids are going to either look at the example to follow or they're going to look at the example to not follow. And if they have an example they're not following, they're going to take anything and everything that's not that. And just having that alone, my kids and my wife have, have really paid attention to that. When I just leave the phone upstairs, I just turn it off. I don't even touch it for hours. They, they recognize that stuff, whether it's asking questions, or just sitting there playing video games with them. That presentness is a game changer. But man, I love those three questions that you asked. What should I keep doing? What should I start doing? What should I stop doing? I am literally going to start implementing that today. And I'm going to give you some results. On that. It's powerful and it's practical. And, and one of the things my dad used, or has said a lot on stage, and you guys probably heard that. I think he might have said it at the, the serve event, serve X. But he, said, he, he always told this to me as a kid. He said, kids don't spell love L-O-V-E. They spell love T-I-M-E. I believe that. Like, it's not... It's not, I love you. Like, that's another thing too. One of the things I used to tell my dad as a kid, he would go, he always, because he always was trying to express how much he loved me. Like, I love you. And you know, I used to always ask him as a kid, I'd say, why? Because when you say the statement, I love you, it's like, it, it just gets repetitive. It just sounds like a statement. But one of the big things is adding a because after your affirmations you give to your kids. I love you because you do this. I'm proud of you because you did this. I believe in you because you did this. And by the way, those are the three most powerful statements you can ever say to your kids is I love you, I'm proud of you, and I believe in you. I encourage you guys to say that at least once a day to your kids. My dad said it a hundred times, but once a day to your kids and then really add a because at the end. Like, I love you because you have this amazing quality. And that just hits kids so much more because I see a lot of parents, they say I love you, but it's like the kids, like it just gets repetitive. It's just a statement they hear. You know, it's, they, they, it, it's no longer new. But you can make an I love you new every day. You can make an I'm proud of you new every day. You can make an I believe in you new every single day if you add a because at the very end of it, which is a very, very important thing. So I would, add, I would say those three things every single day as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, even as much, you say lo- as much you say you love them, as much you say you're proud of them and stuff, the real way the kids are going to know you love them is by the time you give them. And that was the basic thing my dad ever gave to me. It was insane amounts of quality time. And, and that was the real expression of love to me as a kid was he'd put his phone on airplane mode. It wasn't just the moments he said he loved me. That's how kids spell love. It's T-I-M-E. I love it. Man, this has been some great, great insights on parenting, on business, on marketing, on strategy, on content. I mean, geez, we've had a super master class today. This has been amazing, Caleb. So, man, I appreciate every single second you've been on with us today. I've got like two minutes before the event is going to completely end. I was hoping to only do like maybe a small segment and then open it up for the networking, but we actually did a really fun interactive way just to do the Q and A because it kept everybody engaged. Otherwise you'd only have about five people on (laughs) for each little table. So here's what I want you guys to do. We're about to wrap up today's first session. We have a session tomorrow uh, with either Dan Fleshman or Les Brown. You'll have to show up to see who it is. Uh, And then we have, Uh, the networking that we're going to be doing again. So you get to meet our members tomorrow. Uh, If you guys have any questions for Caleb, text in the word Caleb2020. He's going to get your contact information. You guys will be able to stay connected. Get those free gifts that we've been talking about today. Uh, Any last words you want to leave for our audience, Caleb? Tomorrow, whether it's Les Brown or Dan Fleischman, as long as May Lopez is there, we're all going to be happy. That's what I got to (laughs) say. All right. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you. All right. So, I'll yes, thank you that so much. was yes, that was Sir uh, uh, Sir Bex. I keep getting things to Sir Bex. This is the first network of influence. Meet the members event. So I hope you guys had a blast. This was so much fun. I love the Q and A. I'll try to get some of those Q uh, those questions over to Caleb and 
Maybe he can answer them in an email or something. We'll see. Uh, but I'll get those over to you guys. If you guys had a fun time, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. Love you guys. See you guys. Bye.